Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with baked crab and artichoke dip. That's right. First I dip, then you dip, then possibly if there's time, we will all dip. And what makes this so special is not just the amazing combination of crab and artichoke, it's that it's baked in a bread bowl and people just love things baked in bread bowl. And I'm not sure exactly why, but I think it's the subconscious knowledge that even when the dip's gone, they can still eat the dip-soaked bread crust. So anyway, not only does this look impressive, but it's super, super easy to make, and this is how you do it. All right, in a big bowl, I have a couple packages of cream cheese, room temperature, so it's easy to mix. So to the cream cheese, we're going to add some sour cream and some mayonnaise. And then, of course, we're going to need lots of crab. All right, so I have about a pound of lump crab meat. And, of course, the obvious question, can I do this with fake crab meat? I cannot afford or find real crab. Well, of course you can. Is it as good? I think we both know the answer to that question. But you can substitute if you have to. And then we're also going to need some artichoke product. And I know most people will use the hearts, but I'm using these, artichoke bottoms. For my taste, the hearts usually have too many of those tough leaves attached, which are very fibrous. And I'm all for high fiber diets, but not so much with my party dips. So I don't heart hearts for this. All right, so we're going to chop those up or dice them, whatever you're into. Toss that in. We're also going to put in some very finely minced red bell pepper. Not only is that going to add some nice sweetness, it's also going to make this look crabbier. All right, give it a nice color. We're also going to throw in some chopped green onion, lots of minced garlic, and then some green herb. I'm going to use tarragon because I really like that sweet anise flavor. I think that's a perfect match with seafood dips. All right, some lemon, both zest and juice. So I'm going to squeeze the lemon in there. Of course, before you squeeze it, you always want to zest it first. That just makes sense. And then we're going to season this up with some freshly ground black pepper. All right, a nice big pinch of salt, some Worcestershire sauce, and a healthy dose of cayenne. And last but not least, a giant handful of cheddar cheese. Now I like to use extra sharp white cheddar, but any melty cheese will work. And then I'm going to take a spatula and mix this until completely smooth. And if you want to make this job a little harder, use a bowl that's too small so you can't mix very fast. That's what I did. So sometimes I'll use stuff because it looks better on camera. But as I'm mixing it, I'm thinking... This sucks. Why didn't I use a bigger bowl? But really, it was not that big of a problem. Eventually, five minutes later, I had mixed it thoroughly. And that, believe it or not, is done and ready to bake. Now, if you want, you could just dump this right into a casserole dish, pop it in the oven. But of course, we're not going to do that. We're going to get all fancy and do this in a bread bowl. So we're going to cut the top third off a sourdough loaf of bread. And I'm saying sourdough because that's what we use around here. But any crusty bread will work. Pull out as much as the inside as you can, just leaving the crust. You want to tear out as much as possible, but you don't want to break through, so be careful. I'm going to put that in a baking dish with a little bit of foil in case there's drippage. And with something like this, you should always be anticipating a little bit of drippage. All right, we're going to fill that up. You want to pack it down nice and firmly. You don't want any air pockets under there. And by the way, I'll have to admit, I had a little bit of a portioning problem. I usually use a larger oval loaf, but this time I bought a little smaller round one. So I ended up with about a cup of filling left over, which I probably could have just stuffed in there but I didn't want to take a chance of overfilling. So I can't confirm or deny I'm going to save that for some ravioli. But like I said, I could have just piled it on top. It would have been fine. Of course, if you do have extra, you can just put it in a little ramekin and bake it. So we're going to fill that up. And then all my chefly instincts were saying, put a little more cheese on top. Come on, just a little more. So I did. Those same instincts were screaming, a little bit of cayenne, please. All right, that's going to make the top look nice. And that's ready for the oven. So we're going to pop that in at 375 for, I don't know, let's say about a half hour. All right, exact times aren't that big of a deal. You're simply going to cook it until the top is golden brown and it's heated through. All right, there's really nothing in this that has to cook. You just want it hot. And then you don't have to wait for it to cool. You don't have to do anything other than throw it on a platter with some crackers or sliced bread and serve it up. And by the way, if people hear this is what you bring to a Super Bowl party, you're going to have so many invites to choose from next year. You'll be like one of those highly sought after football free agents that sign for millions and millions of dollars. It'll be just like that, except, you know, for the millions of dollars. But same idea, okay? And of course, I have to try some of this. Look at that. That was so good. And of course, this is molten hot, so it's very runny. As this sits and cools, it will tighten up a little bit. And while it is really good hot and warm, it's equally delicious room temperature. So this really is a great party snack. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, when all the dip's gone, you can totally eat that crust. Although it is kind of awkward being the first one that tears into it. But you know what? Someone will be drunker and hungrier than you, and they'll do it first, and then you can swoop in right after, okay? So anyway, this really is a crowd pleaser and a showstopper, and as you saw, extremely easy to put together. So I hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, Enjoy!